Today, let's talk about something that can be sometimes difficult to talk about, but it's important for us to understand. Let's talk about God's right to judge the nations. I'm going to read to you from 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 1 through 3. We read this. Samuel also said to Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint you king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore heed the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I will punish Amalek for what he did to Israel, how he ambushed him on the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and attack Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and do not spare them, but kill both man and woman, infant and nursing child, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. It was a clear and disturbing command from the prophet Samuel to the king Saul. Punish what Amalek did to Israel, utterly destroy all that they have, and do not spare them. God clearly told Samuel to tell Saul to bring a total judgment against the Amalekites. For emphasis, the phrase utterly destroy is used seven times in this account. The idea of total, complete judgment is certainly stressed. The charge against Amalek was this. He laid wait for him on the way when he came up out of Egypt. Centuries before this, the Amalekites were the first people to attack Israel after their escape from Egypt. You can read about it in Exodus chapter 17. Soon after, God told Moses that he would one day bring this kind of judgment against the Amalekites. Now, the Amalekites committed a terrible sin against Israel. When the nation was weak and vulnerable, the Amalekites attacked the weakest and the most vulnerable of the nation. You can read about that in Deuteronomy chapter 25. They did this for no reason except for violence and greed. God hates it when the strong take cruel advantage over the weak, especially when those weak are his people. Though it happened more than 400 years before, God still held it against the Amalekites because time does not erase sin before God. Now, among men, time should erase sin, and the years should make us more forgiving to one another. But before God, time cannot atone for sin. Only the blood of Jesus Christ can erase sin, not time. In fact, it was time that the Amalekites were mercifully given opportunity to repent, and they did not take that time to repent. The hundreds of years hardened unrepentant hearts, and that made them more guilty, not less guilty. So God told Saul, now go and attack Amalek. God could have judged Amalek directly, like he did against the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. But God had a special purpose in this for his special nation, Israel. He wanted it to be a test of obedience for Saul and for all of Israel. Plus, since Amalek's sin against Israel was a military attack, God wanted to make the judgment fit the sin. Now, sometimes we ask, would God call his people today to fight such a war of judgment? Friends, let's remember God has a completely different call for Christians under the New Covenant than he had for Israel under the Old Covenant. Though God does not call his church to take up weapons as instruments of his judgment, it does not mean that God has stopped judging the nations through other means or through different means. When God gives space to a nation to repent, they should turn to him while they still can. Friends, let's recognize God in heaven has the right to judge the nations. 
I find it amusing that there's sometimes people who want to judge God, but they don't feel that God has the right to judge humanity. Let's humble ourselves before the Lord, realize that we live under a different covenant where God would never call us to take up arms and judgment against the others in the same way, or at least as the people of God. And let's be thankful for the deliverance that we have in Jesus Christ.